The Buffalo Sabres finally fire Ralph Krueger. And I don't know, yay? So on my way to work today, I was listening to WGR 550. It's the Buffalo Sports Talk radio show. Normally, I don't listen to the radio on my way to work. Normally, I just kind of listen to music. But when I turned on my car, Paul Hamilton was on. And he said something that really caught my attention, so I listened to it the whole ride. And he said, the Buffalo Sabres practice habits are shameful. And I was like, well, you got my attention now. So he went on to say that he would watch the Sabres practices, and they would be so sloppy in running their drills but nothing would be done about it. So like he would say that these guys would pass, would give passes that were in the feet, they would give passes that were just completely off. They would, you know, if they were catching a pass, they'd bobble it. If they were going in on a breakout drill, they'd go in offside. And apparently like nothing was ever done about that. Like Paul Hamilton specifically said that they would be just allowed to just run through drills that sloppily. So Howard Simon, the radio host asked, well, is this a player problem or is this a coaching thing? Like what's going on with this practice stuff? And Paul Hamilton said the guys were allowed to do it. They were allowed to miss passes. They were allowed to go in offsides. Nothing was ever done about it. Guys, when I tell you I'm listening to this, my jaw dropped while I'm driving to my job. Like you're telling me the Sabres aren't doing the drills well. They're not doing it right. And you don't immediately stop it and tell them to wise up? Like what? Like I remember when I was playing travel hockey back in the day. Like if we did a drill wrong, like if we were doing drills and we were missing passes or we weren't skating hard or we, like if it just looked sloppy, coach would immediately blow the whistle and we'd have to like do a lap and then we'd get back and we'd do the drill right. Like, oh my God. Like I could, I could just hear my coaches like, all right, stop, get on the line, down and back. And when you get back, you better do the drill right. I couldn't believe it. Like as a coach, how do you not immediately stop drills when your players aren't doing them right? Or if they're being lazy or if they're, if they're just, bad how do you not stop it and how do you not like how do you not like punish him for it like i don't understand that how is my 14 year old girls hockey team held to a higher standard in practice than the buffalo sabers but the more i thought about it it made sense because like basically every game i watch i, I make note of the fact that the sabers cannot pass it seems like they can't catch passes it seems like they're bobbling passes like crazy they always go in off sides like they're going in off sides on odd men rushes nowadays like that all makes a ton of sense if the sabers like aren't being held to a high standard in practice how do you expect that they're going to do it in a game so that just boggled my mind paul hamilton said that you know watching practices that was always something that really bothered him and it's like well that would bother me too paul so today the sabers finally finally fired Ralph Krueger, which honestly, like, it, 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 it's way too late. It's too late now. Like, what, <laughs> like, what's gonna happen now? The Sabres are currently on a 12-game losing streak. Their season has been over. Like, it's, it hasn't even been a consideration that any kind of turnaround would happen. Their season's been over for a long time. It should never have gotten to this point. And that's kind of what I was saying, like, in my last video where I was saying that Ralph Krueger needs to be fired right now. When I was saying that, I thought it was already too late. Like, I thought that time was already up. It was well past time for the Sabres to fire him. And I was saying, this has to happen now or nothing's gonna change, nothing's gonna turn around. And I think when Kevin Adams came out and he had a press conference and said losing is unacceptable and all this stuff, I think they were on maybe like a five game losing streak. They're on a 12 game losing streak now. So that means like from five games to 12 games, like all of that in between, like how do you not make a coaching change there? How does it go out? How do you get to 12 games and you only fire a coach because you lose 12 games in a row? Like, it, it's a joke. My pal on Twitter, Kim, also known as Isles Girl, um, she tweeted at me and she was like, um, checking in to see uh, how happy Melody is right now about the Sabres firing Kruger. And I'm like, obviously it needed to be done. I'm glad they finally did it. But I cannot believe that it took this long. I can't believe the Sabres are just not held to a standard that compared to the rest of the NHL. Like, they are held to such a low standard that it took a 12-game losing streak to fire probably w the worst coach in the NHL. Like, seriously, who is worse than Ralph Krueger? Give me a, give me some coaches that are worse than Ralph Krueger. I can't think of any. And, you know, there's the argument that the Pagulas didn't want to fire him because they didn't want to have to keep paying all these salaries of all these coaches that aren't with the team or general managers that aren't with the team and having to pay a coach to fill that role. It's like... 
Well guys, maybe you should think of that before hiring these people. Like, let's look at when Ralph was hired, right? Ralph was hired to start the 2019-2020 season. So at that point, the organization had already been through an eight-year playoff drought, right? You would think that the Pagulas would kind of understand that they were skating on thin ice when it comes to the fan base, right? Like, the fan base was already pissed off. They were already getting sick and tired of all these bad moves, bad decisions, and... So you would think that the Bagulas would understand the gravity of how important it was that they got this hire specifically right. So what do they do? They do, of course, what they would do. They hired a guy who had been out of hockey for, what, six years? And when they got him, where was he? In English soccer? Like, in Premier League? That's who, that's the guy? That's gonna be the one that ends the playoff drought? Are you kidding me? You know, Lindy Ruff specifically, too. Lindy Ruff coached the Devils, coached the Sabres for you know, years in the 90s and 2000s. Lindy Ruff specifically said that he interviewed for that job. And I I couldn't imagine how much he would have loved that job when he's not, you know, coaching. He lives in Buffalo. Like he's a Buffalonian. And I couldn't imagine how much he would have loved a second chance with the group that we had with Darlene, with Jack Eichel, you know, Sam Ryan Hart, all these guys. I couldn't imagine how much, how motivated he would have been to... To a second chance at this team. And maybe maybe him specifically wasn't the answer, but you could have hired anyone else that probably would have been more qualified than Ralph Kruger. I mean, Lindy Ruff is one of the winningest coaches in NHL history. Probably would have loved to have been the Sabres coach. But no, you're going to hire some soccer guy instead of a coach with actual NHL experience. And I know Ralph Kruger had some, some experience with the Oilers, but what did he do with the Oilers? Seriously. And it's frustrating too because you can't keep hiring and firing coaches, right? Like, you know, Kruger lasts two years, Housley before him lasted two years, I think Biles only lasted two years. So you can't keep doing this, but at some point you have to understand that with the group that you have and with a fan base that is so desperate for, for winning that maybe you just have to find the right guy, find someone with experience, find someone that knows what they're doing. They keep hiring all these rookie people, like a rookie GM in Kevin Adams, a rookie GM in Jason Botterill, a rookie coach in Phil Housley, right? Like, and then a soccer guy in Ralph Kruger. So it's, it's sad and frustrating because like, yeah, they did the right thing, but if, at, like, it's too late. It's too late. This should have happened at least a month ago. And it didn't. So I don't know, like, are, are we supposed to be happy about this? Because, like, <laughs> I don't care. Congratulations, guys. You finally did your job. Like, I don't, like, someone's not good at their job. It's an important job. It's something that really you need to be good at. Congratulations, you got rid of them. Like, <laughs> about three weeks too late at minimum. So I don't know. I It seems like they're not really going to be interested in hiring, like, an actual non-interim coach throughout the rest of the season. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting. You know, there have been rumors constantly that Bruce Boudreaux would love to coach the Sabres. There's a coach with NHL experience. There's a coach that won the Jack Adams. Like, if he wants to coach the Sabres, bring him on in. <laughs> also, you know, there's a lot of talk about that uh, college coach from Providence that, you know, potentially they could be looking at. But I, I honestly, I guess keeping an interim coach for the rest of the season makes sense, right? Because what's the point? I mean, what's the point of bringing someone else in just <laughs> for a couple months and then for the season to be over? I mean, I, that's personally what I would want them to do. I would want an established coach now to kind of get things going, but I mean, at the same time, none of these guys want to be here. Like, all these guys, especially the ones with one year left on their contracts, the, the Brandon Montours, the Eric Stalls, like, the Taylor Halls, all those guys, I'm sure they all want out of here. So what's the point of coaching a, a group of guys that are literally playing to not get injured so they can eventually get traded? You know what I mean? There's a quote, too, from Brandon Montour. Um, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said something along the lines of, like, they asked him, do you expect moves to be made? And he said something along the lines of, yeah, I mean, it's a business, and I think, uh, I think guys are uh, expecting that moves be made. I think guys, you know, just kind of want to get out of here, something along those lines. And it's just, <laughs> it's just like, what an ass. Like, can't you just give a basic, like, boring hockey player answer? Like, why do you gotta say stupid stuff like that? So clearly, like, no one wants to be here. All these guys are hoping, praying that they get traded. So I don't know what the point of bringing in a new coach is, but... I mean, ideally, you wouldn't want good coaches to, like, you know, see other job opportunities come up and... and suddenly the Sabres aren't as desirable as they are right now. Not that they're desirable at all, but, like, it, they're kind of the only vacancy right now. But either way, I mean, <laughs> with the team that they have, and obviously there's only going to be subtractions, there's not going to be any additions coming in. 
So with the team they have now, truthfully, I don't know how they win games anymore. Like, if they lost out, like, obviously, they're probably going to win a, a few. There's, like, what, 20-something games left. They're not going to lose them all. But if they did, I wouldn't even be shocked, even a little bit. Seriously. Hopefully, this is the final rock bottom. 12 losses. You finally get rid of the worst coach in hockey. I talk about all the time how there's no rock bottom for the Sabres. I hope this is it. Like, any lower than this, and <laughs> I don't know. Obviously... You still got Jack Eichel to worry about, and losing him would be, I would imagine, the final rock bottom. Hopefully, we don't get there. You know, either way, it was a move that had to have been made. Um, he, he, <laughs> he should never have been coaching the Sabres to begin with, but, I mean, if you look at the team, and if you look at how all these players have regressed so much under him, especially, you know, number 26, especially Rasmus Dahlin, you, you gotta look at the top, and obviously, like, to hear what Paul Hamilton said about their practice habits and how those weren't corrected, like, I don't care how much everyone loved him on this team, like, that's, that, that was the biggest thing, is that all, all of his, Ralph's players loved him, it's like, great, I don't care, they're the worst team I've ever seen, seriously, he's gotta go. So it was like Taylor Hall kind of only signed with the Sabres because he loved playing for Ralph, so you gotta imagine he's probably gone, which... Who even cares? <laughs> I just think that every day is a new embarrassment for the Sabres and the fact that they were allowed to lose 12 straight games before firing their coach when other teams fired their coaches this year, like Montreal and Calgary, for significantly less. You know, it's just, it seems like there truly are no standards, but finally, finally the move gets made, so. Thank you for watching this video again. Once again, thank you for allowing me to vent. <laughs> this has been quite, quite the month or so being a Sabres fan. Um, so I don't know how it's going to go from here. I feel like we're going to get a lot of, you know, AHL players coming up, you know, to fill the spots of the guys that are eventually going to get traded. Um, so it could possibly get worse. Maybe we'll never win again this season. <laughs> Who knows? But either way, as always, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you soon. Go Bills. Bye, guys.